I'm trying this Clippers tea for the first time and it's like chamomile or something and it looks amazing. <laughs> Hello! Hey there guys and welcome back to Unjaded Jade. I have been meaning to do a life update chatty catch up video for so long. So hi, welcome, thank you for joining me today. If you want to go make yourself a cup of tea or a hot drink or something then by all means go do that. I just want to have a very chill little chat with you I guess because I feel like it's been so long and so much has changed in my life that I haven't really expressed on social media, I guess. I mean, maybe this is the first video you're seeing of mine for ages, so if that is the case, then hello. Also, because I just want this to be super real, I have not cleaned the background. And it's a bit of a mess, but I hope you can live with it. <laughs> wow, okay, so just in case you really have no idea what's going on in my life, then I'm currently on a gap year, as most of you do know, and I went into railing for three weeks, which was incredible time of my life. Straight after that, I actually went on a bit of a secret holiday over Halloween with my family. We went just for a few days and the reason I kept it secret was because I felt like I wanted sort of a break from social media. I feel like it was actually such a nice detox to spend time with my family and to not have social media involved in that at all. So I didn't share any photos or any stories from this trip and kind of just like kept it secret. And it was so refreshing to not have this subconscious pressure to like get a nice photo on the beach or anything like that. And then as some of you might have seen on social media, um, I moved to London. Like this is my lovely room. I've actually been living by myself for almost a month now. What? Like that is, that is a little bit surreal. Some of the reasons I chose to move out, I was basically commuting to London almost every day for like events and things in this crazy YouTube world, secret for now. And I also just kind of wanted the self growth of living alone, you know, this kind of independence thing of moving out. And I feel so fortunate that Urban Ness, this wonderful building that I'm currently in, reached out to me about their accommodation. So I'm here very, very short term, um, but it's been literally the craziest experience living both alone and living in London. And I just want to kind of have a chat about it. Like it's only now that I'm sat here filming this that I realise how much has changed internally in myself. Kind of having to be more independent, living on my own, being responsible for paying for stuff, setting things up or if things go wrong, you know, like I just kind of have to deal with it and cooking for myself. All these things which I've been doing the last few weeks. Once again, I think it has been so transformative, but I haven't even realised it until I've now just been sat here like drafting something to say for this life update. Okay, so let's go back a few weeks. Just for a weekend, I went over to Nottingham and I stayed with Lydia. If you don't know Lydia, she is a wonderful YouTuber, Lydia Violetta, and I stayed with her for just a night in Nottingham. And it's funny because the trip actually turned into something quite like meaningful. And we had these very late night conversations that broached into quite personal topics. I feel like me going over to Nottingham was actually so necessary. And it's funny because you never really know what's gonna transpire from a short trip, but I feel like that trip was just necessary. And after Nottingham, I have just been in London for three weeks. London this time of year, guys, is stunning. Like, of all the times I, I could have chosen to move to a city like London, the lead up to Christmas is perhaps the best time ever. Like the lights are all coming on. You've still kind of got this autumn vibe. Like I went for a run Battersea Park the other day. It was so beautiful. Like the sky, the sunlight coming through all the leaves and the foliage. And I remember I was just running and I'm, I'm such a child. Like, especially when I'm in nature, you, you should not see me when I'm in nature because that is like my me time. And I was running and as I was running, I would just like, put my arm up and like whack some of the branches as I was going, like the leaves just like touch them just cause I was like having such a good time. Or I would pick up like acorns and stuff and just carry with them and be like, oh my God, like I've got an acorn right now. Or, <laughs> or as I was running, I just picked up pretty leaves and just like took them with me on my run. Like, I, don't even, I don't even know, it was, I was just having a good time. I spoke on a panel 
at a big Mindshare event. And it was so strange because this whole event was focused around social media and the new age of influence. And I don't know if you guys know, like basically being a YouTuber, being like an Instagrammer, being social media, like in the business world, they call you an influencer. That is the term that we are described as, which um, I, I both like and dislike because obviously some content, I don't know, you, the nature of it is not to like influence you, like just kind of to share stuff. I suppose some of my content I suppose is is to influence you to hopefully like want to achieve or to like live a more positive lifestyle or anything like that. In general, I think it can be a bit of a weird term influencer. Anyway, that was such a tangent. But yeah, I was speaking on this panel and there was like a guy from Made in Chelsea, Stevie is an amazing person. And I was talking on this panel to so many adults, like industry professionals. And here I was like a little Jade, 18 year old, terrified. Literally, I was like shaking on this panel. And they somehow like wanted to hear from me, you know, in my experience. And it was so surreal having questions aimed at me and just being able to discuss it in a very like professional light I guess so that was definitely a self-growth thing too and that day I mean what a crazy day this was guys because that evening I somehow went and watched George Ezra live at Wembley with Jack Edwards like what Jack was invited by Sony UK and Columbia UK like Sony Music, like, what? <laughs> Sony Tube is going up in the world. <laughs> and he took me as his plus one, which is very kind of him. And then we just went and saw George Ezra, which was utterly incredible. Not only do I love George's music, but he just has such like an amazing presence as well. Like he's such a normal person at the same time. Like he's so relatable. And can I just say, I don't know if you guys are fans, but like, I definitely am. <laughs> Lucy Moon also was just casually there to have dinner with us before we went to see George Ezra. And I literally sat next to her this whole concert and spoke to her loads. And when she walked through the door, I can remember just like flipping my head to Jack and Jack looking at me and us just looking at each other like, Lucy Moon is here. Like I had been watching Lucy for years and like she's a physical real person just casually here to like, go to this crazy concert with us, like what is even happening right now? And just because the craziness wasn't enough, we then got to go to the VIP after party. And yes, I somehow met George Ezra and I got a photo with him, here it is. I am immensely grateful that that even happened, that that is like an actual memory in my mind right now and not just something that I made up. <laughs> I also went to a live recording of This Is Spoke podcast. I don't know if you heard of the slum flower on the social media, but I am such a fan of Chidera. I, I, I love how, unapologetic and strong and wonderful she is. Like she discusses such difficult issues in such an amazing way. And the topic that the podcast was covering was representation, particularly of marginalized groups. And it was touching so much on race. It was actually so interesting for me to be almost one of like the few white people in the room. I've been diving more into the realm of race so much more in the last year, but, I feel like that evening was so introspective for me to almost think about like how I fit into society as a white person and how without realizing it, I benefit from so many like societal constructs. And it was so funny because I was meant to be on the, oh, it sounds so stupid, VIP, 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 what? But, um, I was meant to be on this VIP guest list, right? To get into this event and ironically, my name wasn't on the list when I arrived. So I had to awkwardly stand at the like check-in desk, like, hi, like I'm Jade Bowler. I might be, I might be down as Unjaded Jade, like, yeah. And they're like, oh, like what, what are you known for? And I was like, yeah, like studying, <laughs> like let me in please. Um, but I was actually glad that happened because 
this wonderful girl called Julia. If you're watching this, hi. She is a subscriber and she has watched my videos for a while and she happened to be there when I was having this, these issues at the check-in thing. She came over and we had the loveliest chat and I ended up spending the whole evening with her. We even went and got vegan pizza after the podcast recording, like it was amazing. I just love that like, I could be speaking to you right now, okay, through this camera and yet one day I might actually meet you in person, yeah? The fact that you're somehow drawn here to watch me right now and like watch my videos means that somehow we are like-minded or similar. And it's like, when we meet, I feel like we're just gonna like click in so many ways because I don't know, I feel like, I, when I talk to this camera, I genuinely do feel like I'm speaking to friends. And when I meet people, it feels like, ah, oh, like automatic friend. And it was just so nice to meet her and have her for that night, so. Yes. And guys, I've literally been learning how to cook. And when I say learning, it's not like I've been researching recipes because I'm lazy. I mean learning as in I've been forced to cook every night or starve. And I can now make some more basic easy meals. And I've been budgeting and like meal prepping. My stir fry skills are banging. <laughs> yeah, and like making extra dinner for lunch the next day. It's just weird, like adulting, I don't know. I also got my hair cut. I don't know if you can tell. Oh. Oh, hello. I waited far too long to get my hair cut. I waited like a solid six months and I had a bit of a glow up hair transformation. And it was the first time I've ever been to a curly hairdresser in my life. It was really nice to not feel embarrassed for having curly hair. I think that's a good way of putting it because often I would go to the hairdressers and in all honesty, they just didn't really know how to do my hair, like how to deal with it, you know? They would always brush it out while it was dry and it would just go huge and I don't know. It was so nice to just feel like in a safe and supported environment where they were so experienced with curly hair. I went to a place called Unruly Curls in London. Highly recommend, it was amazing. And let me talk a bit more about like my building, I guess. I don't know how I'm dealing with things socially and like living alone. So I live in student accommodation but I'm pretty much the only one here who is not a student at King's, which is a bit of a strange dynamic. I'm also only here for a very short period, so obviously I don't wanna make like super amazing friendships only to leave straight away. And I've got a studio room, which means I have a little kitchen unit over there, so I don't share facilities with other people. Therefore, like the nature of my room means I don't really meet people unless I make the effort to. Now, on my first night here, God, this took so much courage, like so much more than I care to admit. Like, it was just scary. But I took a little packet of Oreos with me. I went to the door next to me and I knocked on the door. And she was like, one minute. And I was like, okay. And I was just stood there, I was like, like literally just like, oh my God, Jane, be chill, be chill. And she opened the door and she was a bit like, like, what are you doing here? Um, Cause obviously it's so weird for someone to move in this late into the term. And I was like, hi, like I've just moved in next door. Hi, my name's Jade. Would you like an Oreo? Um, and she was so lovely. And she just ushered me and she was like, come in, come in. And I was like, oh. And she is just an angel. And we sat and chatted for about half an hour and she's from China. So her English is a little bit like rustier than an English native speaker, but it was so interesting hearing about the cultural differences from here in China, like why she was here. And now we're such good friends. Like we are, we have the best neighbor relationship. She has helped me out so many times. Like when I had all my laundry issues, she was just great. And it's really nice to just feel like, I don't know, I have someone nearby that I trust. And my building also runs this thing, which has been so helpful for me. So, they have this thing called tea tox, like detox. And obviously you know I like tea, right? And every Tuesday up on the common room, basically it's, it's free to come and all the residents who wanna come, just come. And I said come a lot there. Oh my God, what am I saying? Um, anyway, sorry, it's late. <laughs> so I brought my mug and went and had some tea. And again, I didn't know anyone going to this thing. So that was kind of scary. And I went and I just, 
met people and we drank tea and chatted. And through that, I have made some friends in my building. And through getting involved, I then also got involved with the art night that runs on Thursday, where we meet in the common room and make random art as a stress reliever. And then I also got invited to someone's 22nd birthday party, which was so nice. It was so nice of her to invite me after knowing me for like a few days. Um, but that made me feel really included. And that party was a few days ago and I met so many of her friends from university and like I met even more people that live in this building and I think it just kind of taught me that your experience can be so different based on whether you choose to put yourself out there or not. I so easily could have not gone to the t Talks events because I didn't know anyone. I could so easily have not gone to that girl's flat party because I only really knew her and like a few other people. But through going out of your comfort zone, you can literally only grow. Like it's terrifying, but I'm trying to become comfortable in the uncomfortable, if that makes any sense. I just had shivers, I don't know why. Um, but I'm learning so much about myself. Do you know, I really was neglecting yoga for a good period of time when I first moved to London. In fact, my whole routine almost seemed to shift now that I lived on my own and I didn't have the impact of like my family at home. I would stay up stupidly late editing and sometimes I still do. Wake up a lot later than I normally would, like not late, but later than I'm used to as quite a morning person. I would convince myself that I could skip meditating or skip yoga because I didn't have time or that I was too busy or just, I don't know, that I was happy enough not to do it that day. And very soon that started to take a toll on my mental health already. Like I could just, I started to feel so like low so much more quickly and it took me about a week to realize that it was because I just wasn't doing these activities, which while I was doing them, I didn't realize were having such an impact on my life. It was only when I stopped that I realized I needed them so much. So I've picked my yoga and stuff back up again and I'm feeling good, feeling great. I'm also learning how much I value nature and how the city life for me, the most stifling thing about it is is the lack of greenery and the lack of open space. Even when you're in the little green outcroppings and squares of grass and a few sparse trees, you still know that you're in a city and still hear all the cars and pollution and I don't know. I miss the freedom of like an open field and not hearing cars. I also think that such a big city can feel quite isolating if you let it. Even the fact that right now I'm technically a full-time YouTuber. Until I go traveling again, like that is what I'm doing right now, which is really weird to, to say how loud, I don't know, it's strange. But I think that can be such an idealized career when in reality, there are so many less glamorous things about it. So for example, I would say on average, I spend like six hours a day, sometimes more, sometimes less, but like, about that much everyday editing. The nature of editing is a very anti-social task. So it's not like I go into work every day, I have my colleagues, I have friends that I go see. If anything, I go to a cafe and I will work and I will be on my laptop and obviously I can't be talking to people while I'm editing because I need to just focus on what I'm editing. And I love it and I love that I've improved so much recently in my editing style and, and just ability, I guess. But the nature of editing can be isolating if you don't then make the effort to go meet people elsewhere. So obviously I go to events and YouTube things as well, which has been really cool. And I have friends in London who I've met up with, but yeah, I've definitely experienced how if you don't make the right decisions to mitigate it, a big city can feel isolating. You'll be on the tube and there are all these people there, or like in, sat, stood in the street, all these people rushing around you and yet no one speaks to you, yeah? Like, you're on the tube and no one will make eye contact with you. It's like everyone's just in this city trance and I'm really trying not to let the city trance affect me. I think, you know, it's not like I can easily strike up a conversation with someone when the tube is completely silent. Yeah, all these little things which have just been interesting to like observe. I also went to Oxford for a weekend, but I'm planning on like posting a vlog about that at some point whenever 
I get round to it. I also went to Winter Wonderland with my amazing friend Jack, not Jack Edwards, Jack Dickinson. If you've been watching me for a long time and you're a bit of an OG, then you've probably seen my videos with Jack. But yeah, Winter Wonderland was amazing. I went entirely out of my comfort zone and went on the most terrifying ride ever. It's the one that was like, 80 meters tall and when I say 80 it literally was 80 meters tall and they like take you up to the top hold you there for a minute and you're like looking down at this view of London and all the tiny people like oh my god what's going on and then without warning they just drop you again all the way down this tower to the floor and it's just terrifying and I was super adulty and independent and went and got vaccinations on my own which to me is probably the definition of independence because not having my mum there or not having the setting of school and teachers and friends to like support you and just having a clinical room and someone with needles and me having to just suck it up and get them done. That was an interesting experience as well. So this has been the bittiest video ever. And I suppose that's because there's been so much going on recently in my life and so much to like process and dissect. And it's also crazy because every day is so unique. Like today I was doing a secret project over at some offices for eight hours and it's a Sunday. <laughs> Tomorrow I am working on a charity stool for four hours and I'm going to see a West End show. Like every day is so unique and I both love it and find it difficult to find a routine. But I am very grateful for for everything that is manifesting around me. I'm very grateful that you're here right now. If you've watched to this point, then wow. I hope you're well. I hope whatever is going on in your life is manageable or enjoyable or I don't know, it's nearly Christmas, isn't it? So if things aren't going too well, then you need only wait. I've got an undecorated Christmas tree right here. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for following me on my journey. Oh, and before I forget, relaunch of the motivated study teas. I'm sorry, what? If you guys are interested in having one of the like comfiest t-shirts ever to do some studying in and get yourself motivated, then click the link in my description and go get some before they're all gone because they're going quickly, which is the craziest and most exciting thing ever. And I'm so grateful. But yes, they have restocked. Thank you so much for being here. I love you lots and have a beautiful week. Bye.